everybody. It's your girl, your diva and knowledge, Lady Mocha, representing Mocha's Ladies Lounge. Hope everybody is doing good thus far. Hope your week is going well. Again, I know it's been a while since I've uploaded, and I'm still going to be uploading some things to my primary channel, um, Mocha's Cafe de Paris um, channel. So it's just that I know I've been neglecting the Mocha's Ladies Lounge you know channels my channel specifically for the ladies so i'm trying to make sure i give both channels an equal amount of my attention so rest in assured i am going to still be uploading on my mocha's cafe de paris channel i'm still going to be doing um content over there that channel is more of my co-ed channel for men and for women and again this channel here mocha's ladies lounge is for the ladies um and again my channel is not going to be based on you know anti-man hating um content where you know we're just dragging black men we're just dragging men in general but it's actually a channel that gives women uh you know wisdom knowledge and how to um better themselves as women versus always pointing the fingers at the opposite sex and saying they are the reasons we're single mothers they're the reasons we can't get married they're the reason society is so ruined because of black men and things of that nature. So, um, this channel is not based on that. Just thought I would let everybody know. If you're looking for a channel um, that's going to do all the male bashing antics that you might desire, then you know there's plenty of spaces. There's plenty of women who do do that type of content. I'm just not one that does. And I don't knock those who do do it because you have black men who do it. So... Um, big ups to the anti-black women and anti-black men, you know, hating channels, you know, do what y'all do, but I don't have that type of negative energy over here. So, nevertheless, ladies, I posted and I told y'all since, um, I believe last week, if y'all haven't already seen it, um, I posted in my community tab, and again, and ladies, if you have not subscribed already, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Mocha's Ladies Lounge, alright? So, um, I posted in a community tab last week that I was going to do content, um, a new recipe, uh, a topic that is long overdue, poverty penis, the destruction of broken women. Now, keep in mind, now, originally when I did post um, that uh, notification of this up coming topic on my community tab originally I put the destruction of black women but I realized that I needed to reiterate and change that because um, it's not so much the destruction of black women it's the destruction of broken women broken broken black women broken white women broken Latino women just broken and being broken does not discriminate um and so many of us as women we're broken on different levels uh we're broken in different areas of our lives whether it was from our childhood or things that we encountered during our womanhood um we've all experienced different levels of trauma as women um some of us experienced earlier than others some of us even experienced it doing just being a toddler being a child not even um you know fully developing into a teen you know some of us our innocence has been robbed from us before we can fully develop so um uh, it's a lot of women out here that are broken so i wanted to change that and state poverty penis the destruction of broken women because again being broken broken does not have a color so what has become the demise of broken women being unsuccessful in these relationships uh, is it jealous friends is it lack of family support lack of education all women that are just willing to overlook the destruction of poverty penis. Uh, poverty penis is on the rise, ladies. It is definitely on the rise. We have a high population and struggle dick. Um, and it's unfortunate that there are not a lot of women that are catching on to the struggle. And unfortunately, a lot of them have made themselves become a statistic due to the struggle dick. Now... Before we go more into poverty penis or struggle dick, however you 
whatever your choice of words. Um, let's first define what is a broken woman. Because we hear all the time, you know, we hear these brothers going in, you know, uh, women, you know, we're broken, we're bitter, um, you know, we're mental, we're dysfunctional, you know, we, we get a lot of heat for not having our mental well-being together. So, before we can go into this content, let's first discuss what is considered a broken woman. Um, a woman that has had multiple failed relationships, that has tarnished or contaminated her outlook. Or relationship with men. A woman that has become bitter towards men due to having too many negative experiences with men. Um, a lot of the negative experiences that she encountered could have very well been at the fault of her own or at no fault of her own in a relationship. Um, a lot of the things that we go through as women, in many cases, are things that we bring upon ourselves. Uh, being Dixpert, dehydrated, um, you know, being desperate, fearing being lonely, fearing that our biological clock is ticking. If I don't hurt, I have children. Um, before I hit 36 years old, my eggs are going to fry. They're going to be hard boiled. Um, all pressure from friends that are getting married. Everybody around you is getting married. Uh, everybody around you, you know, um, is getting a ring on it. And here it is. You just keep being invited to weddings as a bridesmaid. You know, you, you haven't had that luxury of getting that dream wedding, that husband. You know, all of these pressures that start to eat you up as a woman. Because we're in a society where society is making women feel like they're not feminine. Unless they have a husband. Unless they have children. Unless they have something that society states you're supposed to have in order for you to be considered a woman. Um, so, again... Um, this is what, these are factors that can consider a woman to be a broken woman. Just too many negative experiences with men. Um, things she calls, things she didn't always cause. I mean, in some instances, a woman did, there's some women who tried to do the right thing. They tried to wait till marriage, tried to wait till have their first child when they was married. You have women who went about it the right way and still failed. Found out the husband was a whoremonger, a cheater, you know. Um, found out, you know, the hus her husband had other issues that she was not aware of. He's a gambler, cannot handle money correctly. Um, you know, you have, you have had women who tried to avoid falling in that alignment of being another statistic. Being another sister who's failed and a marriage and relationship. You have had women who have tried to go about it the right way. They didn't sleep with all kind of random dudes. They made sure they had their children from a man who they knew was their husband. Um, somebody who they felt they could build a future with. Women, there's someone who have done the right thing and still got to cheat. Still got cheated. Still got bamboozled. Because um, even the most educated woman, you know, just some shit you just can't see through. I don't care how smart you are. Even the most intelligent man. Somebody's going to always get over on you. You know, and just when you think you're smart and you know it all, you got the game down packed, ain't nobody going to get over on me. It'll always be that one individual that slip to the cracks where you're so good at judging people. You just know what you're running into. You know, you, you're, you've always been a good judge of character. And it's always that one that has fooled you, got over, you know, played the game so well, you couldn't read them. It, it happens. At any given moment, we all can get got. We all can get got. I don't care if you're a professional expert relationship, uh, expertise on marriage. I don't care if you have read all the dating books. I don't care how many, you know, how many uh, social media dating experts that you watch on YouTube, you're going to get got. It happens. Um, nobody's perfect. You know, you're not going to always be able to pinpoint a devil when you see one. And usually by the time you figure out how demonic they are, you have invested so much time and energy into them. But nevertheless, we as women, my point is we keep making bad decisions in men and it's costing us money. 
It's costing us our freedom. It's costing us our time. We're losing a lot. And it, the, the truth of the matter is we need to abort. Abort making bad decisions. Abort being desperate, being thirsty, because you feel like your biological clock is ticking. You feel like all your friends around you get married. You feel like your homegirl, who you know been a hoe for 30 years, she looks up and get married, and here it is. You've been keeping your legs closed like a renovate, renovated building at AHA. Ain't been letting nobody in, you know, trying to fix yourself up and get right. And here it is. You're still struggling trying to find the right man. And these hoes, hoes steady getting wiped up. They meet, they meet these simps. You can't even catch a break. You can't even get a man to offer to buy you a cappuccino at Starbucks. I mean, I get it, sisters. I've been there before I've been married. I've been winning women. I try to do everything right. Still got bamboozled. Oh, no, I'm going to wait till I marry my baby. I'm going, I did it all the right way. But it's this thing called life. And life has a way of humbling you and putting you in situations where you will find out. Even if you don't, even if you stay on top of your game, even if you stay on top of your shit, you can always be knocked off your high horse. So it's a lot of men who judge us, you know, and don't give us all the credit that we deserve. But the truth is, you know, you got a lot of sisters out here who tried to avoid being in statistics. Got married only to find out they married the wrong man. Waited to have kids till they got married only to find out the man they married and, and, uh, and that the man that they married was not all of what he pretended to be. You can do it all the right way. You can wait, be patient, have the marriage before the carriage and all of that and still fail. It's called life. It is called life. Now, I want to talk about this poverty penis. Uh, poverty penis has jaded the mindset of broken women that have placed more emphasis on sex than security. Let's face it. Women have become more infatuated with sex than men. I listen to how these women, I listen to how so many sisters talk. Oh, they talk about how good somebody dick is, how, how good he made them nut. How many times she climaxed? You know, we're we're in a sexist America where we think it's only men who got dirty minds when it comes to sex. Nationality, there's women out here. These women are becoming more hornier than these dudes. They 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 looking for dick more than these guys are looking, you know, for coochie. Let's just call it for what it is. You, I, I, it's gotten so bad where I see women on social media begging for dick. Oh, I sure would love to get my booty rubbed tonight. I mean, what woman sits up there and lets anybody know she's sexually dehydrated like that? Even if I was horny and never married, I'm not going to post on social media. I want my, I want my click lick. I want my booty rubbed. I mean, these women are becoming more vulgar. They're, they're putting it out there, and, and in some cases, it's impressing a lot of these better males, but men that are work quality and substance, it turns them off to see a grown woman talk like that. To see a grown woman, you know, um, act so dick thirsty, posting all these provocative pictures because she wants some DNA, and like Tommy Sotomayor used to say back in the day, DNA, dick and attention. You have... More women that are more concerned with sex than security. They're more worried about his dick being big than his wallet being big. They're more worried about his dick being good than his character being good. They're more worried about if a man can make them come sexually than can a man stimulate them um, intellectually. I hear more women... From, you know, just observing and being around women. They talk more about a man's dick than they talk about his character. Or who he is as a man. As a person. Yeah, girl, he got that good good. He showed sure how to put it down. He showed sure how to... And, and, and we wonder why, as women, we're struggling getting men to take us seriously. Now, um, because we have made sex 
a priority. Um, a lot of these male incels have taken advantage of that. Um, a lot of these homosexuals, as I would like to call, you know, we all know who homosexuals are. Homosexuals are low common denominator males, male incels who prey on the desperateness and weakness of women who so badly want a man that the homosexual knows in order to get in good, um, with the female incel, all he has to do is deposit dick. All he has to do is con contribute dick. He does not have to provide. He does not have to pay any bills. He does not have to help lead. All he has to do is make dick deposits. The horrible sexual population is on the rise. And who do we have to thank for that? It's us. It's us as black women. We are the ones that are making these men comfortable. We're the ones opening up our Section A apartment. If you're not getting governmental assistance to pay your rent raw, no condom, um, we're allowing these men to move in with us. These men who don't even have cars. You got to pick him up in your car. These men who don't even have gas money, if you were to pick them up, he's sitting on the passenger side while you pumping the gas. Are you riding, driving, you hit a pothole, your tire bus, you're on the side of the road. Trying to change the tire while he's sitting on the passenger side on his flip phone. It is us. It is the broken women. Now, if it doesn't apply, you ain't got to apply. If you're not broken or if you're a former broken woman and you've learned your lesson and you have um, jumped ship from the homosexuals. Jump ship from the build the bombs. You're not settling for less. Then this message is not for you. But if you are still partaking in hobo homosexualism, meaning you're allowing these dudes to move in your apartment with you and your children, and all they have to contribute is dick, then this message is for you. As long as these male incels think they can get away with contributing penis. It limits them from having to possess the qualities of being a real man. Broken women are the ones creating the penis providers, the dick donators. All of you women that are broken. You allowing these men access in your space, and your place, and your vagina, and the presence of your children. And they cannot give you anything but dick. That's it. These sperm donors, dick donators, penis providers. These are the type of men that a lot of broken women are luring. Now, I'm not stating that all men have this issue. But I'm speaking in terms of women that are specifically allowing these type of men a position in their lives. Before we proceed with this content, I'm going to start off by saying that this is not a hate and bash black man video. So make sure you listen to the whole video because some of you dudes are very emotional. A lot of you dudes been acting like women lately. You hear a woman say one or two things about a black man and you bring your little, you, you, your, your little kitty energy, your kitty energy purring over here in my chat. I'm not with that foolishness. You don't like what I'm saying. Then you can exit gracefully. Again, this is not an anti-black male video. So make sure you listen to the whole video before you start firing your shots in the comment section. Regardless if men think black women are to blame or black women are saying black men are to blame. One thing I do know is that women are now at a state of an emergency. Ladies, we don't we don't have no more room for error. We're getting older. A lot of us are slowly creeping up in our forties. Oh, you got these young women. If they're not learning now while they're in their twenties, they're going to be late bloomers and not find out till their forties or late fifties. By then, it's your your options are limited because these men are already being coached. The next generation of men are already being coached that you don't deal with a woman once she has hit a certain age because she has hit the wall. Even though I know some twenty year olds who done hit the wall, 
I know some 15 year olds who done hit the wall. Depending on how young a woman has gotten sexually active, she does not need to be 50 to hit the wall. She could be hitting the wall at damn 13 years old. Depending on how many trains she don't let these young dudes run on her. You got, I mean, look at ghetto gaggers. You got females 18 years old, not even in their 20s, already been ran through. So you do not have to be over 40 to hit the wall. Because that's, that's another myth that a lot of these guys around here are preaching. So, well, again, um, as women, we have to be more mindful that poverty penis doesn't become a priority. So, whose fault is it that poverty penis is on the rise? Struggle dust dick is stunting the growth of black women. The growth of broken women. Because climax is overruling common sense. Something about when you erupt from the struggle dust dick, as you climax, so does all your cumin. Oh, so does all your common sense. Once you have been sexually stimulated and released, once your sexual stimulation has been released, so has your discernment, so has your wisdom. You can't become, what I want ladies to understand, you can't become so infatuated with how good a man makes your legs shake when you orgasm that you allow these homosexuals these struggle dick dusties, they get away with not having to step up to the table with husband potentials. If all you are willing to accept is the struggle, struggle dust dick, that is all you shall get. And guess what? It's not the dusty, the, the dusty dick dude fault. That's your fault. We can't sit up here and blame all these men for what we go through because the truth be told a lot of us are allowing ourselves to go through it and we're positioning ourselves to have to go through it and trust and believe I'm going to break down all the factors of how women are allowing poverty penis the struggle does dick to put them in poverty And again, what has happened is we're in a society in which women are becoming more sex crazed than men. Women are becoming more bold. I mean, back then, you know, men used to have to beg. I mean, men used to have to pull some tricks out the out the hat to get laid. These women now, these women are offering. Or putting it right on the platter. To the point to where a dude don't even have to respect them enough to smash them at a hotel. These women have become so dick crazed. They'll, they'll, they'll take it if a man screw them in a damn on, in an alley on a dirty ass mattress. You have women that are willing to get dicked down by any means necessary. And she doesn't care how much she has to humiliate herself to get laid. Because again, we have a high population of horny women. Women that have become so infatuated with dick to where they don't lost the desire of what it's like for a man to really treasure their bodies. To, 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 um sexually uh, uh, to appreciate them sexually to to un to know that when a woman is giving herself to you it should be a gift from God it should be a blessing but a lot of these thoughts have contaminated that they have ruined that these Jezebel incels they have ruined that to the point men have lost the value they no longer value a woman 
when she is willing to put herself out there and she knows she's not that type of woman because what it is now, sex is so easily accessible. Men know they can pretty much get it from anywhere, anytime, any place, and just like anything else. If it's something that everybody could get, the value of it depreciates. If everybody could get a Honda Accord, if everybody could afford one, it is not it's nothing special about it. If anybody could get it. And that's what we're dealing with. So as women, but you, there's a lot of things that we have to be cautious of. And like I said, the biggest issue is women have become digmatized. You have women that are desiring sex more than marriage. Desiring sex more than a husband. Desiring sex more than building a family. You have some, that, that, that is the state of an emergency we're in right now. You have women who have become obsessed with just getting dick. These are the ones, I don't want to be married, I don't need no man, but I got five, six kids to show for. Or don't have any children, but around here letting every Tom, Dick, or Hakeem smash. So let's let's get more into talking about this poverty penis, because I know a lot of y'all don't, a lot of y'all are not really comprehending, or you may have an idea, and I want us to be on the same page. Let's talk about this poverty penis, or or, or, the, or the struggle dust dick. Let, let's go into talking about it. The pookie penis. Uh, it's exactly what it says. You know, poverty penis. Poverty penis is penis that will place you in poverty. A lot of you sisters, y'all ain't understanding that. Now, again, this is not one of those male bashing, man bashing videos about black men who refuse to take accountability, but... This is for women to avoid getting themselves in this position to begin with. The truth is, we can listen to all the How to Get a Good Man podcasts. We can read all the books and magazines on 10 ways to get a real man, a true soulmate. Um, we can listen to all these sisters in, in the black YouTube sector talk about how men ain't this and men ain't that. And we get all of these speeches, and, 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 and we, we, can, we can hear the good word where, you know, some people are speaking the truth about these men, and it make us feel good for the moment, uh, and it give us a small sense of empowerment, but none of it can teach you that struggle, dick, or penis poverty has become a burden to women that lack self-esteem. When I speak in terms of the struggle dust dick, I'm not referring referencing to medical issues like a man can't get it up, he's impotent, or lots of libido. This is far from what I mean by struggle dick uh, or poverty penis. Women, we are in a state of emergency and we can't afford to make any more bad decisions from struggle dick situations. As a grown woman, especially a grown woman that may have children, or you may not have kids, but you are constantly traveling, you're working, you're the breadwinner in your home. It's imperative that you pay attention to the red flags of poverty penis. Or uh, struggle dust dick. It's a lot of red flags. Um, because at this point, we don't have time to point the fingers. We could point fingers all day and talk about how black men ain't shit. And, and black men, you know, they're worthless human beings. You know, we, we can do that all day. We, I, I, we can do a platform for several hours at a time. You know, but the thing about it is until we change our mindset, you can change all the men that you want. You can change the clubs, you can change the settings, you can change until you change your mindset. You can even physically alter your appearance. You can get butt injections. You get facelifts. Until you change your mindset. You can be around bitter women who share the same ideologies as you. That black men are garbage. Black men ain't this and that. Again, until you change your mindset. 
You can buy all the soulmate books. You can go to all the single women seminars until you change your mindset. You're going to continue to keep having the same issues. It's imperative that as a woman, you pay attention to the red flags of poverty penis. Poverty penis is one of the number one causes of single parent households, high percentages and child support cases, and an increase in the struggle dust population. So the question lies, what are the factors of poverty penis that women should be cautious of? So, ladies, we're, we're, we're going to get down. We're going to break down the ingredients, the factors, because I'm tired of seeing my sisters in the struggle dick struggle. Um, and, and, and you know, the, 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 what, I forgot what I called it. <laughs> but, um, the, 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 the struggle dust dick situation. Um, I'm, I'm tired of seeing sisters get caught up, you know, in the struggle dick. It's sad. It's disheartening. And, you know, it's gotten to a point now, you know, where um, women, we're not really trying to educate ourselves, and I get it. The reason why a lot of women are not trying to educate themselves and not trying to better themselves because women is constantly, especially black women, we're constantly being scrutinized. Um, we're constantly being making a mockery out of, we've become the butt of jokes. So even when somebody is kicking some real knowledge to us, it's hard for us to receive it. Um, it's hard for us to take it in because we don't know if people really mean well when they, you know, try to share knowledge with us or if they're basically making a mockery out of, uh, out of us. So, I mean, even me being a black woman, this advice that I'm giving, this knowledge, these jewels that I'm dropping, it's going to be a sister that's going to feel some type of way regardless of what, um, you know, some of us, if you got issues within yourselves, it does not matter. If somebody's trying to put you on game, you may get offended. You may not see the good in it and how it can help you grow. So, I mean, I get it. Some people just cannot be helped. So, I could only put the message out there for those who are willing to receive it. But I, I am tired of black women getting themselves in struggle, dust, dick situations. So, what are some of the red flags? If you're no, these are things you need to pay attention to to avoid poverty penis. All right. So the first thing is a man that consistently complains about paying bills. Man, I got so much going on, man, man. Even one thing is another. My water bill, $1,200, you know, my car note, $650. And I got the college child support. You know, then I got to pay my PO, my probation officer. Then I got to kick out money to go to DUI school. For that last time I got pulled over drinking and driving. Then I got to look out for my mama because my daddy ain't been there for me. So I got to pay her bills too. I mean, it's a turn off when a man is bickering about his responsibilities, especially when it's responsibilities he created. When you hear men complaining about taking care of their own children, even though they created them, or you hear a man complain about how his baby mom was ruining his life when he picked all of those women, he laid wrong with all four or five of them. But he's complaining. He did not protect himself from making itself a child support recipient. I mean, payee. First off, it doesn't look masculine when a man is crying about how many bills he has to pay out or his paycheck on some money. His pride shouldn't even want a woman knowing he's struggling to have a problem with paying bills. If you are in the presence of a man who's constantly discussing his hardships, that's a red flag that if you sleep with this man, you can possibly be signing up for poverty penis. A lot of you sisters, y'all take yourself through things that could be avoided. You need to pay attention to what a man does, not just what he says. 
And not just what he says, but what he actually is doing. A man that's constantly bitching about paying bills, he has poverty penis potentials. He's letting you know, hey, I'm already in the goddamn struggle. So if you let me hit it wrong, I'm letting you know I ain't going to be able to do a goddamn thing for you because I'm already bitching and complaining about the light bill, the water bill, the other four or five baby mamas I got to get child support for. Red flag. Common sense. But you'll be surprised. Common sense ain't common. Everybody don't have it. Or women, plenty of women that are set up here and got knocked up, jumped and rolled that poverty penis, knowing this man was already struggling, living with his mama, um, living in a boarding room, didn't have a car. Hell, you know he had no car because you had to pick him up in your goddamn car. You had to go see him in your goddamn car. Why he leaning back in the passenger side? These are the type of women that sisters are linking up with, having children from. And they want to piss and moan and bitch about these men when these men don't help them provide and take care of these children. You knew he had poverty, penis, potential. Next red flag. He has children for multiple women. Poverty penis. And why are women, why are women who, why are women having their first child for men who have multiple children? You mean to tell me you rather have your first or only child? You want to share. You want your child to share his father with Four or five other baby mamas. And if you're around these men and they complain and bitch about child support, they'll already let you know. You sit up there, you you, you let them raw, you let them hit it raw if you want to. He'll be complaining about having to pay you for your baby next. <laughs> Poverty penis. Struggle d dusty. Red flag. Five, six baby mamas. And he work at the cleaners. He work at a damn warehouse. How much money you think his check going to have by the time? How much you think your baby going to get by the time the other five, six baby mamas get theirs? Are you serious? That's putting yourself, sis, in a poverty penis situation. Next red flag is he has an extensive criminal history. You cannot have a legitimate, solid future with a man that has had several, multiple run-ins with the law. The man has committed more criminal offenses than LL Cool J has uh, sold albums with Def Jam. Man with a criminal history, that 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 not that's poverty penis potentials. Now, this is not to say now, don't get me wrong, I know some brothers who have done some time, they got out doing way more successful than men who done been out here all their life. I ain't talking about them kind of men who have changed their lives for the better. I'm talking about these struggle dick dusties who have been in and out of county jail, prison, federal, the majority of their life. How they have room to even get somebody pregnant, I don't know. But what I notice is a lot of these guys who've been locked up so long, when they do get out and they finally bust one, they bust enough to where they could goddamn uh, impregnate 10 women at the same time. Because um, all, all that sperm that's been resting during 5, 10 years during incarceration. When they do bust, it's going to be a goddamn explosion. Like an atomic bomb. Huh? 
But seriously, women, uh, anytime you meet a man who's been in and out of jail the majority of his life, he went one, one, years ago when he was young, okay, and juvenile. He's 40, 50. He ain't been locked up since, okay. Or uh, he went to jail for some dumb shit like driving with a suspended license because he had to get to work and, you know, minor stuff. I get it, you know, as long as not consistently. But you got men lock up, these dudes who've been incarcerated for heavy criminal offenses, aggravated assault, strangulation, child molestation. What's the future? That, that's, that's poverty penis potential. Thank God Nicki Minaj is Nicki Minaj. If she wasn't Nicki Minaj, she would have been in, in a poverty penis situation. Because Nicki Minaj's husband, Kenneth Petty, that's a struggle dick dusty. He don't have nothing to offer her. Absolutely nothing. And you have women like her who got it all that are so desperate. They willing to pay for it. They don't, they willing to be the primary breadwinner just so they could own some type of penis, even if it's a struggle dick penis, if it's a poverty penis, just to say they got one. Man with criminal history, the ones who've been in and out of jail, got a track record, um, they'll never be able to get a legitimate job. They'll never be able to get a real job. Um... You know, they're going to constantly be declined because of their criminal history. You know, especially when it's been things like murder, violence, domestic violence, strangulation, definitely any crimes towards children like child molestation or, or child abuse, you know. Um, a lot of jobs aren't, they, they don't even want to touch people who have those type of offenses. Especially child molestation and domestic violence. Hurting women and, and children is definitely a no-no when they run these guys' backgrounds, especially if they're trying to get a good job. Now, they can make it always get a little sidekick job, but we know how that goes. But anytime you let a man smash you that has an extensive criminal history record, you signing up for poverty penis. Sign on the dotted line. Next, uh, red flag, he doesn't have a place to stay. A grown man who does not have his own place. No grown man should be moving in with another grown woman unless he is that, unless he's the father of her children or they're married or something like that. And women do not need to make their house a home for men who don't have anything. You, as a woman, you meet a man, he needs to have his own apartment. He does not always need to be crashing at your place every time you want to hang out with him. Sorry about that. I had a call. Um, no woman don't need to be making her place an option. If a man is, is struggling, he's living in the streets, he's crashing from place to place, um, it is not your job as a woman to accommodate a grown man. You know, even if you care for him like that, oh, well, you can stay here, or you can live with me and my kids, or, you know, um, you're welcome to stay with us. It's, it's risky, um, especially when you don't know the man well. You don't know if he's consistent at keeping a job. You don't know if if he's a homosexual. Some men, that's what they do for a living. They, they crash from woman couch to woman couch, from a Section A apartment to Section A apartment. That's what they do. Um, they prey on women that are desperate and vulnerable. And, um, you know, when they get tired or they have an argument with you because you finally catching on that this dude is only being dead weight on you. Now you're getting on him. When you going to get a job? You know. Um, I'm over here struggling paying this rent now because your bills done got higher now. Once you allow another grown man to move into your apartment, you don't think it's going to really hurt your pockets, but he's using just as much toilet tissue. He's burning just as much lights. He's running just as much water. Your bills go up high. When you move another adult into your house, you will see the difference, especially when they're not contributing. Wow, when it's just you and your kids, you have some control over that. 
But when you have another grown man that's eating up all the oatmeal cream pies, sucking up all the Capri Suns, your stamps, everything goes quicker when you got another grown human being that's not contributing. So, you put yourself in a struggle, dust, dick situation. Um, you're taking a man in who does not have a place to stay. Not to mention, a lot of these struggle dick dust, dusties, I've known a lot of women who have taken men into their homes and was not able to get rid of them. I've known women who were scared, afraid um, to make a move in their own apartment. Like, I know a lot of y'all seen the movie Baby Boy um, when Snoop Dogg played as the, you know, <laughs> the, the, the jailbird boyfriend, you know, um, that moved into Yvette's place when Yvette, you know, and her man broke up. She was scared to put him out her apartment. She was afraid of him. She was afraid to even ask for her own car keys. Yeah. You have some of these poverty penis dudes. These struggle dick dusties. They will take over your apartment. Uh, and, uh, and, and some of you sisters, y'all may can attest to this. You may have gone through it, or you know other women I've gone through. I've known other women who were scared to be in their own apartments, who were scared to go home, who walked in on eggshells in their own apartments. A struggle Dusty can take over your shit like he own it, like he paying the bills there. I've seen women. Won't you just get rid of them? Girl, he crazy, he crazy. I get rid of him, I he may tell my apartment. He made this. He made that. Blah, blah, blah. You got women living in fear. This is what happens when you pick up that poverty penis. A real man ain't about to fight with a woman over her own apartment. First of all, he don't have his own apartment. For a second of all, he don't want to be a, 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 at the mercy of a woman. A real man don't want to be at the mercy of another woman. He don't want to have to stay with her. She get mad, want to put him out, whatever, whatever. A homosexual. They'll lay right there. They not embarrassed. They ain't mad enough to feel ashamed. They don't have no real pride. They'll sit right there and let their woman do every goddamn thing. The next red flag of a possible poverty penis is uh, he has no real goals and ambitions. You know that dude who's still recording in the studio. He's still trying to make it big. He only been trying to um, drop a mixtape for 20 years. He's still in the studio. He's always in the studio. Paying studio fees. And studio fees are expensive. Because when I was calling myself doing a little music here and there. Them studio booth fees they cost. 100 an hour. 250, 300. And don't let that engineer got to make your beats for you. If you didn't provide your own beats. You have these struggle dick dusties. They will allow their families and their children, their women to suffer all for a dream that ain't never going to goddamn come true. And then they'll flip the script. Well, you just don't have no faith in me. You just speaking negative. You just don't want to see me win. No, I want to see you get a job. He always in the studio smoking weed. Ain't dropped no album. Ain't get no, uh, didn't get none of the songs on iTunes or Spotify, whatever the hell these other, um, you know, <laughs> music apps are. He's trying to be a rapper. Unrealistic expectations. All he talks about all these big dreams. He's a dreamer. I'm going to open my own business. I'm going to start my own clothing store. And he still stay with his mama. I'm going to stop my own business. Uh, dude, you dropped out a third grade. This ain't to say that everybody who has a good business, that owns a business because they were, had degrees. But uh, what I'm saying is, you know that he did this dude is selling you nothing but dreams. He ain't about to do none of what he's telling you. Because he don't even have the basics. So, again, be careful with the dreamer. The dreamer will put you 
uh, will put you in a poverty situation. You let him hit it raw with all these dreams. You, your child going on 10 years old, he still ain't dropped that album. He's still in the studio. He still ain't started that business. Come on. You should know when a man is lying to you. He's just selling you dreams. He's not about to do nothing. He's not about to move out of his mama house. He's not about to try to get his own car, his own place. And he stay up there telling you, one day I'm going to own my own business. One day uh, I'm going to become a coach for the NBA. These unrealistic ass lies and dreams he know he will never be able to fulfill. But you got sisters who believe it. And that's how they get stung by that damn poverty penis. Letting these dusties sell you dreams. Another red flag, poverty penis. He will wallow in your struggle. Uh, he'll, he'll wallow right there in your struggle with you. He see you suffering. He see you, you know... You're struggling trying to pay the light bill. You're struggling trying to pay the water bill. You're doing the best you can with your job. You know, you're trying to provide, take care of your kids. And he's right there comfortably. He's snoring behind. He's snoring in the same bed with you 3, 4 in the morning. Comfortably. Why are you stressing about your lights? You know your lights about to get turned off any day. You know um, the people could possibly repossess your vehicle any day. You know you, you up in the rut. Your back is against the wall. Ain't, ain't nobody sleeps. One thing I know is like nobody sleeps better than a broke ass dude. A broke dude, he gets the best sleep. While you up stressing three, four in the morning, losing your edges, cause you don't know how you gonna pay for little Tim Tim childcare. You don't know how you gonna take care of this five hundred dollar light bill. You don't know how you gonna pay this insurance on this car. You do not know how you gonna make it. And hip the just snoring, just as comfortable. That's that. That ain't nothing like that struggle dust snore. There's a difference between a hard working man snoring and a struggle dust snore. They're not the same type of snoring. <laughs> when a hard man is snoring, his breathing is 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 is. A lot more relaxing because he's been working all day, so he's relieving himself through his snoring. But the struggle does snoring, he just snoring. Ain't no heavy breathing because his ass don't work. He don't pay a goddamn thing. But some of you sisters are so desperate, you just want a warm body in the bed with you at night. You just want a man to cuddle up behind you and spoon you so you can feel a sense of security even though he's not securing a goddamn thing. He will sit there and allow you to struggle. He won't be man enough to go get a job to help you out. Now, I ain't saying you go digging off of him. You just want him to pay, 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 pay your bills and you don't do shit. I'm saying you doing your part as a woman. And this man is up here watching you wallow. And you up here, you're expressing him, I don't know what I'm going to do about this lead bill. I don't know what I'm going to do about my car note. He up there, he acting just as confused as you. I don't know what you're going to do. I wish I could help you, but, uh, shoot, I just paid my P.O. And, man, ain't going to work me till next week. Oh, uh, you got them ones who love to flip a dollar. They want you to give him them a thousand dollars so he can flip it and go make three, four grand. He'll never come back with that thousand dollars. He'll keep the thousand dollars and still ain't double, ain't flip nothing. Something about them struggle dust, dusty dudes, they love to flip other people money. They don't flip nothing, they spend it. Bay, 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 bay. All you got to do is give me 500. 500 and I go flip that and get 15 get 15 1500 I can make 500 1500 he ain't brought back a goddamn thing he bring back $50 he done smoked it up with weed bought a side chick kids uh, a bucket of church's chicken poverty penis
Next red flag, he needs you doing he needs you during his time in the struggle. Uh most real men who are in the struggle, they're financially trying to get their stuff together, they don't want a woman and assisting them because they got too much pride, you know. And some of them are man up to tell you, hey, I'm just not in a position right now to really help. I'm not in a position to I'm staying in the board room right now. I'm struggling trying to get myself together. I just got out of a divorce or I, or I just lost a job. I'm trying to get myself together. Um, most real men with real pride, they don't want to deal with a woman when they know this shit ain't right. You know, um, it does something to his masculinity. And, you know, and again, a real man don't want to be at the mercy of another woman. He don't want a woman having to take care of him. Now, it's different if y'all are in a relationship. And y'all been in a relationship and he loses his job or something like that, then that's different. All bets are off, you know. But I'm talking about these men that just aren't even your man like that. You know, and he does not mind being with you knowing his shit ain't straight. Knowing he's going to be more of a burden to you than a help to you. You got not to struggle, Dick Dusty. He will sit right there. Knowing he's not in a position to help you. And will lie and will sit there and make you think he's going to help you. He's going to be there. And in some cases, some of these guys, I've seen guys who, who I've seen women who have given Negroes a pass with the struggle, you know, with, with the struggle um, dick dust because they knew how to use that good wood. So they would give them a, uh, they was able to uh, get away with making dick deposits. Like anything else, they got old. Now, when they finally went to go get a job, she thinking, okay, I held this dude down all this time. I've been helping uh, paying the bills. I, I bought his first suit for him to look presentable on his job interview because he came with just scraps, you know. You, help, you, you helped him to get, at least get the job. Now he done got the job, he's stunting on you. I've seen this happen to several women who have been there. Who have been there when a man was down. And see a lot of black women, they don't get, we don't always get credit for being down. Um, being there for a man when he's down. We're told we're stupid. We're weak. I met my husband. He was not in the best top-notch position. He was struggling, you know. Um, and, and I was patient enough and I loved him enough to wait on him to get his stuff together. Um, well, we don't get credit for that. We're, we're, we're told we're desperate, you know. But when these other women of other colors do it, you know, they're queens, you know. They get the admiration and respect that's due to them when they're willing to stand by a brother in the struggle. But when we do it, you know, we're just, we're just desperate, you know, whatever. Nevertheless, I've seen women who have helped men get on their feet only for that man. Now that's his turn to return a favor. He acted like... He got amnesia now. But I ain't tell you to take me in. I ain't tell you to take care of me. I ain't say I need you to take me in. But God damn it, you didn't tell me not to either. You move your black crusty ass right up in here. Knowing your shoes was talking to you. But guess what? I got you some more shoes. Hoping that in return, you will be the man I need you to be since I was the woman you needed me to be. Well, you came to me with no draws. I brought your draws. So, your sack ain't hanging. And it's cold and, or, and it's hot weather. Or shriveling up in it's cold weather. This is the thing so I get. Now you got a job. Oh, you, you realize all the shit you got to pay. Oh, yeah. I got tickets back in D.C. Tickets in Maryland I ain't paid for. I'm telling you, some of these guys, is, men, let me tell y'all. Some of y'all do some fuck shit. All y'all ain't bad dudes, but I'm telling you, some of these sisters being real good girls, being real good women, try to look out for these brothers and I got shit at all. Y'all right? don't understand the struggle. Women try to be understanding. We try to nurture, try to care, try to be loving. And sometimes it works against us. It just does. So, got to be mindful of that. Um, if he needs you doing his struggle, you're, you're basically taking a gamble. Uh... Because he may, once he get on his feet, he may act like he don't need you anymore. So it's better if a man is in a struggle, let him stay there. He's a real man. He'll get up. He'll get on his feet. He don't need you to do anything for him. Now, if y'all in a relationship together and your man has hardships, he got laid off, then it's only right. You beat up for him. You support him. Y'all, Because y'all are in a relationship. But you don't pick a man up that's in a struggle and y'all not even in a relationship with yet. Not like that, but anyway. Um, keep in mind, ladies, realize that dick deposits do get old. I mean, 
Don't get me wrong, the climaxes, they, they be fun for a while, but damn. When that light bill start coming in, that water bill, that car note, you see your groceries are going quicker now. You got to buy more food than ever now that you don't let the struggle dick dusty move in. Your energy bill don't went up. It's just you and your kids, you have some kind of balance. You have some type of structure. He came in there. Now all shit all wrong up. You don't know where to begin with. Because you're looking at it like, well, I mean, he ain't been using that much. I've been, we always keep the lights on. We always been using my, my tissue. Let me tell you something. One person could change the whole dynamics of your household, even if they ain't eating a lot of shit. It's just human nature. It's just common sense. A person staying, living in your residence, they going to use stuff. Stuff going to go quicker. Kids, you issuing it out to them. You monitoring how much they can get an adult. That's different. Um, Dent deposits do get old. You know, you start feeling that struggle. You know, it's getting hard. Kind of hard he getting is getting hard. These bills. You can't keep climaxing your worries away about your bills. I don't care how many times, you know, he sexually arouses you. When you are, when you start realizing you're really in a struggle and you're losing more than gaining. Let me tell you something, that good wood ain't going to mean nothing to you after a while. And you got some guys that think like that. As long as I keep, long as I keep throwing the dick down, she, she'll, she'll be alright. I can't take dick to the light bill. I cannot take dick to the water bill. I cannot take dick um, to Toyota or Acura. Dick don't pay bills. I'm sorry. But the homosexual... The struggle, dick, dusty dude. He think he can always give you dick allowance and you'll be all right. And I should be told, a lot of you females, y'all created that monster. Now, you tired of the dick. You want him to step up. Now he having attitudes with you. You arguing, you fighting with him. I need you to be a real man. Nah, sis, don't go making all them demands now. You should have put your foot down from the beginning. That's your fault. You knew you had to pick him up in your Toyota Camry. You knew that. You knew this man would not offer to even put a tire on your car. You know that. Um, and lastly, you know, getting pregnant from poverty penis will place you in poverty. He's unemployed, unattentive, unconcerned. So a lot of women out here got to do it on their own because they put themselves in a position where they don't have a choice. My men, my children mean the world to me. You have to make them mean the world to you because ever, the, 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 the struggle dick dusty daddy, baby daddy, he don't give a damn. A lot of women have had to make their kids their world because them niggas shook theirs. Whose fault is that, ladies? Whose fault? Who created that? Who, who did? Who is doing that? You see the the, 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 the the signs of poverty penis. The, the man is broke. Ain't got no money. He don't like to work. He got a criminal history where he can't work. The man is lazy. After he done bust another two, he won't even offer to take the trash out. He won't even offer to go wash your car. He picking you up late from your job in your car. You come from home from work. Him and his homeboys that's unemployed like him got your old house smelling like black and mild and four loco. Women, we got to do better. We are at a state of an emergency. Poverty penis is on the rise. Y'all need to start declining the poverty penis. If not, you're going to stay a statistic. If not, you're going to stay in a struggle. If not, you're going to have little dusties and little dusty honors that you're going to be raising by yourself. So anyway, I'm going to get ready to shut this down. Uh, if y'all have not subscribed, please make sure y'all subscribe to both of my channels. Um... 
Mocha's Cafe de Paris. That's my co-ed channel for men and women. Um, my channel, uh, Mocha's Ladies Lounge. Please make sure y'all subscribe if y'all like hearing today's content. Um, if you would like to also donate to my movement um, and continue to keep blessing my channel, you're more than welcome to cash at me. Dollar sign D Y M O N D G Y R L I Yahoo.com. Please make sure y'all smash those likes right now. Just hit that like, it's free. It's not going to cost you anything, and I really appreciate that. So anyway, y'all, I want the ladies. I need to know, have you ever put yourself in a struggle big situation? Uh, what did you do? What did you learn? Uh, why you think, uh, for if there's other reasons I didn't mention, so many broken women are allowing themselves to get caught up in struggle dust dick situations. So anyway, y'all, I'm going to get ready to shut it down. It is your diva and knowledge. Lady Mocha representing Mocha's Ladies Lounge. I'm going to always break you off with a slice of truth and knowledge, y'all. Y'all take care. Be blessed. Have a good one.